guys, Dr. Betts here. Welcome back to Chemistry 1032 Instructional Videos. Today we'll be going over Chapter 7, What's the Attraction? It's all about attractive forces between molecules. So, first one is by far the most challenging to explain. London, London forces, also known as London dispersion forces. These are attractive forces that occur when electrons become, become unevenly distributed over a molecule's surface. That's really hard to, to comprehend, especially as a young chemist. Let me see if I can help you out a little bit. Let's imagine, let's just imagine we had an atom of helium. And this is the dividing line between the atom. So here we have an electron. And here we have another electron. Remember, helium only has two, okay? This works for, for molecules and atoms, but it's easiest to explain it with helium atoms, okay? That's why I'm using helium. You could also uh, have this for an entire molecule. You could have this for a really huge molecule. It works for all of those. It's just easiest to explain with helium. Now remember, these electrons that are here and here are not stationary. They're constantly moving, all right? So this electron's here now. It could be over here to, uh, in the next second back down here, over here. Remember, they, they can just be zipping around, right? Kind of like, you know, as my little laser pointer's doing, just zipping around. You can't even predict where they're going to be. It's going everywhere, okay? Now, think about it in terms of statistics and odds. What are the odds that you would have this electron on the same side as this electron? Oops. Let me draw that back up here. So now we'd have both electrons on the same side of the atom. If this occurs, if this occurs, this side of the atom here becomes delta negative, and this side becomes delta positive. Remember, delta means uh, somewhat or partial, okay? So at any given second or instant, you could have both electrons on one side of the atom. If that occurs, you'll have this delta negative and delta positive occurring. But now, of course, it could be just another a fraction of a moment this electron's back over here, okay? So that could be that this electron just goes ping back to here. And if that occurred, then we're all of a sudden back now to no delta negatives, no delta positives. We're back to being essentially neutral, right? Now, keep that in mind. It's going to be pretty rare for this atom, this helium, to have a partial dipole, or sorry, pardon me, a temporary dipole. What I mean by temporary is it forms, and then it's gone. It forms, then it's gone. It forms, then it's gone again. Temporary. Forms a dipole, positive, negative, and then all of a sudden it's gone. Now, let's imagine we have a larger atom, such as xenon. Okay? Xenon has, let me check, 54 electrons. Distribute it somehow inside of the atom, okay? They're in there somewhere. Now, in comparison to helium, it's probably a lot more common for one of the electrons over here to find itself over here. It's probably a lot more common to have half of the electrons plus one on this side of the atom, on the left side, okay? It's also probably not all that uncommon to have two of these electrons find their way over here for an instant, or even three. Remember, there's 54 of them, okay? So, if you have 50% plus 1 on the left-hand side, you're delta negative, delta positive, okay? Because there's more electrons in xenon, it's going to happen more often. The temporary dipole will occur much more often, okay? I know this is weird. But this is London dispersion forces, or London forces, okay? They're temporary dipole due to the fact that electrons are not always spread evenly through an atom or a molecule. Sometimes you'll have half of them plus one on one side and 49% on the other, okay? It just sometimes happens from the random distribution of electrons, okay? Now this causes a temporary dipole, temporary delta positive, temporary delta negative, and that's how they attract each other. And that's a London force. Now, what kind of molecules use London forces? Well, 
nonpolar things tend to use them the most. Now, there are London forces and polar molecules and things like that, but the London force is the, is the weakest of them all. It's like the one that really you don't think about if you're polar. But nonpolar atoms love to use, or the, well, basically they have no other choice but to use uh, London forces. Okay? Makes some sense? And now, uh, cling wrap is a great example of a product that we use that uses London forces to hold on to things. Okay? Which, is, which makes it very, very useful, actually. It repels water. It's really useful. Okay? So, London forces are the attractive forces as, that are a result of an uneven distribution of electrons around a molecular atom. The more London forces, forces you can have, the more attraction you can have for another molecule that's like you. Okay? Dipole-dipole attractions. Now, un, um, they're not the same as London forces. London forces are temporary dipoles that are set up from the uneven distribution of electrons. A dipole-dipole interaction or dipole-dipole attraction is a permanent dipole. It's never leaving. Now, recall, I think it was chapter 4 or 5 when we talked about polarity, shapes of molecules and polarity, right? We talked about nonpolar and polar. And we learned that polar molecules such as water, have a permanent delta negative and permanent delta positives on the hydrogens, okay? This is a permanent dipole. Now, oh, sorry about that. It's a permanent dipole. Now, molecules that have dipoles also use London forces, but they are negligible. They're just not that significant. The London forces just don't really matter that much, okay? Now, Permanent dipole is required. So let's let's uh, let me get rid of this. Let's talk about a simpler molecule that has dipole-dipole interaction. Hydrogen chloride. Why not? Well, the chlorine is delta negative. The hydrogen is delta positive. What happens now is another hydrogen chloride, which is also delta positive and delta negative. These two molecules will interact. The delta positive of the hydrogen will be attracted to the delta negative of the chlorine. And this is how dipole-dipole interactions work. Remember, these dipoles are permanent. They exist always, unlike London forces, which are temporary. Okay? Attracts another molecule with the same dipole, positive, delta positive, delta negative, towards itself. And that's how dipole-dipole interactions work. Oh, oops. There we go. Here's just a small illustration. Here's an in ether doing dipole-dipole interactions. Here's the delta negative oxygen, the delta positive uh, carbon area down here. So these carbons are delta positive. Delta positive, delta negative. So it's just interacting with itself with molecules that are just like it. Now, you might want to put this in your book, underline it, circle it, put smiley faces beside it. It's one of the most important uh, attractive forces that we know about. It's called hydrogen bonding. Now, it's kind of a misnomer. I mean, there's a hydrogens involved for sure, but it's not a bond. It's not covalent. It's not ionic. It's a dipole-dipole attraction, actually. It's a very specific type of dipole-dipole attraction. Remember, a dipole-dipole attraction a permanent delta positive and a permanent delta negative are attracted to each other. Hydrogen bonding has that, but it's very specific in that it involves a hydrogen that is attached to a nitrogen or an oxygen. Okay? In other words, NH or OH. NH. OH. Okay? NH. OH. Now, sometimes fluorine, people say, can do it. Uh, we're not going to get into fluorine in this class. But for you guys, hydrogen bonding is NH or OH. The nitrogens will be delta negative, the oxygens are delta negative, and the hydrogens will be delta positive. And these are permanent dipoles. They always exist. Now, hydrogen bonding looks kind of like this. Let me try to draw it over here. Here's a molecule of water, and here's another molecule of water. 
Delta positive. Oops, I'm sorry. That's a mistake. Delta negative. Delta positive. Delta negative. Delta positive. And I think everyone will agree that the delta negative of this oxygen and the delta positive of this hydrogen will be attracted together. It's a dipole-dipole interaction. But you'd call it a hydrogen bond because it's an oxygen to, sorry, there's an oxygen-hydrogen bond here being attracted to the oxygen over here. This is a hydrogen bond. It's a dipole-dipole interaction. Don't get that mixed up. But it's a very specific type of dipole-dipole interaction known as the hydrogen bond. Basically, if you see OH, more than likely it's going to hydrogen bond. If you see NH, more than likely it's going to hydrogen bond with something else or with, or with molecules that are just like it. And here we have some uh, different types of hydrogen bonding, some very, very important types. Intramolecular, basically this is where the uh, oxygen or where a molecule attracts itself. So for example, if my left hand here, oops, get on the screen, and my right hand were attracted to each other, they would be drawn to each other and they would kind of be hanging out with each other all the time. They do that because my arms will allow them to come together. Okay, so I'm, my arms are flexible enough that I can allow them to be attracted to each other. Okay, so this is called intramolecular. When one part of one molecule, when a part of one, sorry, when parts of one molecule are attracted to parts of that same molecule. Okay, intramolecular. Now there's intermolecular, and that's when two different molecules will hydrogen bond together. Okay, so here we have a water right here. And here's another water. And they're hydrogen bonding to this ketone right here. They're hydrogen bonding to that ketone right there. That's intermolecular. Intramolecular, one, the, a molecule attracts part of itself to another part of itself. Intermolecular, Ex, uh, more than one uh, molecule are attracted to each other. So here we have a water and another water attracted to a ketone. And here's a great example of intermolecular hydrogen bonding between ethanol and water. Notice, ethanol has an OH. So ethanol can hydrogen bond itself to water. And then water can bond to ethanol, hydrogen bond. Okay? Again, it's because this oxygen right here of the alcohol is delta negative and the hydrogen is delta positive. All right? Pretty cool, huh? Now, uh, you're probably wondering... Why do I care about these things? Well, because they hold life together. This is very, very important. Okay, Intermolecular forces cannot be underestimated. They're very important. Ion-dipole attraction. An ion-dipole attraction occurs when ionic charges, remember, positives and negatives, sodium chloride, for example, and polar molecules interact. Now, a polar molecule that we usually talk about in this situation is water. Now, Basically, what you have what you have is an attractive force, uh, an ion dipole. Oops, I'm so sorry, guys. An ion dipole attractions are an important attractive force, often seen in biological systems. Okay, see it all the time. Very, very common. And the attractive force is stronger than hydrogen bonding. Stronger. Now let's see the. Let's just take a look at this here. Here we have an ionic uh, ionic attraction. Oops, I thought I had another slide there. Sorry. Um, we'll keep going. Ionic attraction. An ionic attraction is the strongest attractive forces between that involves more than just an uneven distribution of electrons. Basically, it's an ionic bond. It's an ionic bond, guys. It's very, very simple. We know all about ionic bonds. Sodium plus, Cl minus, attract together. Very strong bond. Very strong attraction. You can also see that here, where we have a carboxylate and an ammonium. Okay? They are very attracted together. In fact, this is a very common attraction in proteins called a salt bridge. Okay, Happens a lot in proteins. Okay, So you have a carboxylate group and a protonated amine, also called an ammonium group. They are attracted together because one is negative and the other is positive. This is ionic. So when you have a positive thing and a negative thing attracted together, 
That's an ionic attraction. It's an ionic interaction. Very strong bond. And here's kind of a breakdown of all the different types of uh, um, interactions. It's a little flow chart. So first thing you can ask yourself, is the compound polar? If the answer is no, go right to London forces. If it's not polar, it has to have London forces to stay together. That's all there is to say. But if it is polar, then you can ask yourself, is the hydrogen bonding a possibility? In other words, do you have NH or OH? If no, then it's dipole-dipole interactions. Remember, hydrogen bonding is a type of dipole-dipole attraction, but it's very specific. The hydrogen has to be on a nitrogen or an oxygen. If it's yes, then come down here. Is an ionic charge present? So is there a cation? Is there an anion? If no, then it's straight-up hydrogen bonding. If yes, well now, are the, is the opposite charge present? No. If the opposite charge is not present, then it's an ion dipole. So an ion like sodium is attracted to a um, water molecule, for example. If the answer is yes, then it's an ionic uh, interaction, and that's called a salt bridge. Pretty neat, huh? So this is a pretty good table to refer back to, you know, just so you can kind of get the feel for all this stuff. Now, this is some stuff you might want to write down. It's very important. And, uh, and I know that a lot of you are interested in medicine, so maybe you're interested in this. Attractive forces keep biomolecules in shape. They really do. It's amazing. The attractive forces discussed in this section are used extensively in nature to hold biological molecules together. Proteins, DNA, sugars. It's amazing. For example, cellulose is held together through hydrogen bonds. London forces hold uh, cell membranes together. Hydrogen bonding holds DNA in the double helix. And proteins are held together by a combination of all these forces. Okay? So these are very important forces. You have to understand them to understand things that are coming in front of us. Okay, So this is why it's important. Now, that's the end of 7.1. If you didn't understand some of that, you might want to review it. Perhaps read the textbook. Get this stuff straight in your mind, especially dipole-dipole, uh, hydrogen bonding, and dispersion London forces. Those are the very important ones. Ion dipole is important, but it's not as critical. And salt bridges are very important. So make sure you get these things straight in your head. Make sure you can define them. Make sure you can recognize them. It's very simple, but you have to learn it. All right, guys? Now, with that, I want to wish you good luck and good chemistry.